Homeostasis is the ability to maintain a relatively stable internal state that persists despite changes in the external world. The maintenance of homeostasis usually involves negative feedback loops, which acts to oppose the stimulus that triggers them. In this video, I'll be covering the homeostasis of blood glucose, osmolarity, pressure, volume, and calcium concentration. The human body's normal glucose concentration is 90 mg per 100 ml. When blood glucose level rises, the beta cell in the eyelids of Langerhans in the pancreas produce insulin which triggers glucose uptake in liver and body cells, as well as glycogen storage in liver cells, which decreases blood glucose level to the standard glucose concentration. On the other hand, when blood glucose level decreases, the alpha cells of the eyelids of Langerhans in the pancreas produce glucagon which inhibits glucose uptake in liver and body cells, increases glycogen breakdown in the liver cells, increasing the blood glucose level to the normal concentration. The normal blood osmolarity of sodium chloride is 300 milliosmo per liter. When blood osmolarity rises, for example sweating, the osmoreceptor in the hypothalamus senses it. The hypothalamus responds by producing antidiuretic hormone ADH or phasopressin, which is released through the posterior pituitary gland. ADH triggers the feeling of thirst in our body, so we will respond by drinking water. It also triggers the distal tubule and collecting ducts of the pancreas to increase water reabsorption thus decreasing blood osmolarity to the normal value. The normal human blood pressure falls below 120 over 80 milliliters of mercury. When the blood pressure or volume decreases through dehydration or blood loss, the juxtaglomerular apparatus in the kidneys detect it and produces the protease renin, which cleaves the inactive angiotensinogen produced by the liver to angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 1 is then converted to angiotensin 2 by the enzyme ACE, or angiotensin-converting enzyme. Angiotensin 2 then stimulates the adrenal cortex to produce aldosterone, which increases sodium and water reabsorption in the distal tubules of our kidneys, as well as triggering facial constriction, thus increasing the blood pressure and volume back to the normal values. On the other hand, if blood pressure rises, a stretch in the cardiac muscles would trigger the heart to produce atrial natriuretic peptide or AMP, which inhibits renin production in the kidney and stimulates facial dilation, which decreases blood pressure. The normal blood calcium concentration is 10 mg per 100 ml. When blood calcium level rises, the thyroid gland secretes calcitonin, which triggers calcium storage in the bones and calcium excretion in the kidneys, thus lowering the blood calcium level. In fishes, rodents, and some other animals, calcitonin is required for calcium homeostasis. However, in humans, calcitonin is apparently needed only during the extensive bone growth during childhood. On the other hand, when blood calcium level decreases, the parathyroid gland secretes the parathyroid hormone, which stimulates calcium release from bones and also stimulates calcium reabsorption in kidneys and also promotes activation of vitamin D. Active vitamin D in turn acts on the intestines, stimulating the uptake of calcium from food, thus increasing the blood calcium concentration to the normal value.